왜 저그는 황제가 될수 없을까? 나는 꿈꾼다. 저그의 반란과 혁명을. 나는 늦가 포즈. 이제 농다. 혈안은 강하다. 그렇게 배워왔고 지금도 그렇다. 난 혈안의 최종 강기다. 인텔 클래식 결승전 르카포즈 이대동대 KTF 메트겐스 이영호 사람들은 우리 일상이라고도 하고 본자 후보라고도 한다 일상? 본자? 난 그런 거잘 모른다 사람들은 우리가 붙는 걸 정말 보고 싶어 했지만 사실 더 간절히 원한 건 바로 나다. 이영호 제대로 한번 붙고 싶었다. 결과는 생각하지 않겠다. 내 자신도 소름 끼친 나만의 경기. 그것을 즐길 뿐. 나는 루카 포즈 이재동이다. 처음 사람들은 날 보고 어린 개물이라고 했고 지금은 모두들 최종 변기라고 한다. 어린 개물에서 최종 변기가 될 때까지 난 키가 제법 자랐다. 그리고 무엇보다 변기 속에 있을 때난더 크게 자라는 것 같다. 나를 성장시키는 그거 지금은 오직 그 생각뿐이다. 오늘 나는 이재동 선수와 멋진 경기를 할 것이다. 난 KTF 레지겐스 이영호다. 
Intel Classic brought to you by GOM TV. We started out with 128 players, and we slowly but surely whittled them down to the final two. Jadong, a Zerk player, and Flash. Today is a huge moment in esports history, a huge moment for gamers all around the world, as the top two ranked players in Kespa will now duke it out to see who is really number one. Now bear in mind, Jadong started out number one for the past few months, but just recently managed to get that title stolen uh, by Flash. Flash is now currently ranked number one. Jadong has been bumped down. This has been nicknamed the Dream Final. So many players have been waiting uh, for a final such as this one with two people who just seem to be unbeatable. It's going to be a best of five, and it should be a pretty epic best of five at that. Taking a look briefly at the map listings is going to be Blue Storm for the first map. Second map will be on Othello. Third map will be Katrina. Fourth map, if we go to a fourth game, will be on Coliseum. And finally, if we go to the last round, it will be again on Blue Storm. Bear in mind as well that each player was allowed to eliminate one map from the map pool. More than likely, the map they felt that their race would have the hardest time winning on or that they would have the hardest time defeating their opponent on. Jadong's map of choice in that case was going to be Hills of Storm. He felt that that map uh, would be far too difficult to beat somebody like Flash on. Now, when we take a look at Flash's map, he decided to eliminate Andromeda. Uh, so unfortunately, we will not be seeing the uh, Panda Bear guy in the finals of the tournament. He is now retired, um, probably selling Klondike bars somewhere, something besides StarCraft. Now, these players have spent a lot of time practicing and preparing for this moment. This is a huge day in these pro gamers' lives. As I'm sure you remember, Flash managed to come out with a pretty strong win against his opponent um, in the previous GSI against Stork uh, with a 3-2 victory. Pretty close games, but in the end, I just have to say that Flash managed to dominate. Now, Jadong just finished uh, the MSL finals where he actually lost in what a lot of people, including myself, would regard uh, as an upset. He lost that... Uh, 3-0 to Never, also known as 4GG, a Terran player. Since that moment, Jadong has spent, uh, well, he spent almost all of his time practicing, uh, excuse me, Zerg versus Terran for as much as possible. This is now uh, the tournament he wants to win. And by the way, the uh, grand prize for this is going to be $40,000. That's a lot of money. Uh, and with that being said, these pro gamers have definitely spent a lot of time preparing for this moment. A lot of pressure is on them. Whoever wins this uh, series is basically going to be regarded as the best player in the world for probably about uh, half a year. So it's a pretty huge moment. Non-stop gaming, 12 hours a day, trying to perfect strategies, studying each other's games via replays and VODs, meeting with their coaches, discussing different strategies, different openers, uh, having their entire team sit down and go over possible uh, abusable moves they could use on certain maps. So we should see some very exciting games here.
Well, there's no turning back now. It's all down to this moment, and it's going to be pretty big. Jadong and Flash now about to duke it out. They've entered their booths, and uh, they're getting their settings set up perfectly so that they have uh, absolute, complete control over their uh, units, uh, their ability to macro, everything. It all comes down to this. So in a few minutes here, we're going to get this going. We are going to do a brief recap. Uh, where you get to, you're going to get to see some of the previous games that each of these gamers played uh, during the tournament. I do believe uh, the first will be Jadong. We're also going to briefly bring up the maps here. So uh, sit tight and get ready for that. Uh, should be pretty interesting. The only map that we really want to look for... Um, a bit more closely is going to be Blue Storm. Blue Storm, a uh, pretty tricky map for uh, Zerg players um, to lose to against Terrans. Terran, um, not so strong on that map, but not uh, so bad that it's impossible for Terran to win. So that may be a little bit tough for Flash. Um, although I did talk to both of the players ahead of time, they did say that they were not that concerned about any specific map. I mean, when you think that they've practiced so much for this moment, uh, they're probably uh, as comfortable as they can possibly be um, on every single one of these maps. Well, by the way, cheers to all of the gaming community sites, TeamLiquid.net, GosuGamers.net, ICCUP.net, the largest StarCraft ladder in the world, uh, and all the other gaming sites out there too, SK Gaming, everything. Thank you for posting about this. Also, the non-gaming sites. We've been very surprised to see how many people are actually interested in watching StarCraft. Uh, not just mainstream gaming sites, but uh, just big internet sites in general. So please feel free to spread the word. Tell people about this tournament we're running. This is only Season 1. We're going to go on to Season 2, Season 3. This is going to be a usual thing. This is not a special event. So if you're enjoying this, get ready for it to happen again uh, in about a month after this. We're going to start up a new one, another Avertech Intel Classic. Well, I would say we probably have about 10 minutes before this actually commences. In the meanwhile, we let the players gather themselves in their booth. And here we can see today's matchup. Obviously, Jadong against Flash, the two highest-ranked players in the world. They did eliminate Hills of Storm uh, and Andromeda. Also, in case you're wondering how this is going to be spaced out, we will take a break for eight minutes after the first two games. Then we'll play another two and take another eight. And after that, we'll play the final game, assuming it goes on for that long. A lot of people expect this to be um, a 3-2 game, somebody winning three and another person winning two. Um, a lot of people argue it could be a clean sweep for one of these players. Now, bear in mind, each of these gamers managed to go 3-0 with their opponents in the semifinals. I mean, they made it look easy. So certainly uh, it's tough to say who's really going to be the more dominant one. Certainly Jadong had a tough time. Uh, in the MSL Finals, but he's certainly learned from his mistakes, so we'll see if that changes. Flash is feeling pretty confident. Uh, he's almost always feeling confident before these big matches, so we'll see what happens there. StarCraft, a constantly growing eSport, the most competitive eSport in the world. Uh, it's become quite popular, not just in Korea, but outside of Korea as well. And I would certainly implore you to try that out, whether you want to play it for fun or whether or not you want to pick it up and try to play it competitively. I'm a former competitive player. I can say it's very difficult, but it's also a lot of fun. And I do believe very soon here we're going to get the Jadong highlight video.
Yeah, yeah that is Jadong. He was dishing out some Onich back there. Let's see if he can do it again against Flash. Jadong, an incredibly accomplished player, did not manage to win that last Star League, but this is his chance to make up for that. In just a little bit here, we're going to show you a brief Flash highlight video as well. The Jadong uh, does feel pretty confident about this series. As I've said before, nothing but practice, not just training by himself on Icy Cup or something like that, but training with his teammates, having his teammates all sit down and try to figure out the best possible builds, um, having his coaches go over the maps with him, uh, trying to figure out uh, critical points for good surrounds, all that stuff, all that effort has been put in here so that Jadong can come out with a win. $40,000 is a lot of money for someone his age. It's a lot of money in general. It's more money than uh, some people make in an entire year. And if he can pull it off, he'll be a rich uh, young Zerg. That was Flash, the winner of the GSI, now in the Grand Finals against Jadong. He has, of course, also practiced long and hard, trying to figure out the best timing pushes, what maps he should be rushing on, uh, what maps he should be playing defensively on. Of course, watching countless Jadong VODs and replays, not just by himself, but with his teammates and his coaches, so they can try to figure out uh, the best possible way to take down someone like Jadong. Both these players have well, or at least have over a 60% uh, win ratio. Jadon really up there with his Terran versus Zerg win ratio. Now, Jadon's best matchup is actually Zerg versus Zerg, but it's Terran versus Zerg certainly not weak. Neither of these players have a weak matchup. So with that being said, I think this is going to be a terrific game. The dream matchup, Jadon versus Flash. We have a little bit more time before the games get going. I do see that both the gamers have, in fact, joined. We do have our ref in the game as well as the two observers. So in just a little bit, this is going to get going. Very exciting moment, huge moment in StarCraft, any sports history. Uh, we're going to see who can top the other one. Again, my name is Nick Tasteless Plot. I am a professional StarCraft caster, and this is a huge day for me as well. I am really excited to cast this. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me, who do I think is going to be the victor here? And I just don't know. Uh, I really don't know. I have no uh, preference here. I can't tell who's really going to be better. We're going to find out in a little bit, but at this moment, there's no clear underdog. That is the LeCaf coach we're getting a shot of. This is, of course, a big moment for him as well. Um, I talk to a lot of these coaches before the games. They say it's actually quite stressful to show up to these events and watch the players who you sat down uh, and trained with um, and mentored them for so long to see them actually in this moment where they have to, uh, you know, prove it. They have to prove that their coach uh, was actually a good helper. So uh, a big moment in his career as well. And, of course, the KTF coach is down here too. Here we're getting a shot of the percentages. As you can see, Flash's percentage is a little bit higher. Remember, our first map is going to be on Blue Storm, a map that's a little bit tough for the Terran. It'll also be our last map if we end up going past four games. Blue Storm's a one-on-one -on -one map, so this is a map we could see some very interesting strategies uh, occur on. StarCraft, the most competitive esport of all time, 
It is a wonderful game, very complex, deeply complex, um, and that's what makes it so wonderful. You have to spend so much time trying to master every facet of the game before you can even start to play at the competitive level. And then once you get there, there's so many other walls that you have to break through um, just to start beating people who are quite good. And let's just say that these two have come as far as any human has come in StarCraft. The metagame constantly evolving, constantly shifting makes uh, the game ever-changing. We're always putting new maps out there so that once one map gets really figured out, once we've kind of seen how that matchup plays out on that map, we put a new one out there, and the metagame transitions again. You have to use different openers on different maps, different strategies, and of course it depends on the person you're playing against as well, so there's a lot to take into account. Looks like we're going to be getting this started pretty soon here, I do believe. Jadong versus Flash. The matchup of the century. Let's get ready. It's on now, Jadong against Flash. All the practice is going to boil down to this moment. A huge moment in esports history is about to unfold. Flash, the former winner of the GSI, Jadong, the best Zerg in the world, the formerly, uh, the former number one ranked player in Kespa. They've both been ranked number one. Now we're going to find out who's really number one at this moment. Blue Storm, a map that's pretty tough. Um, for uh, Terrence to beat Zergon, although as you can see from our previous stats on this map, at least in our tournament, looks like Terrence aren't having such a hard time. But in general, if you look at the all-time stats, you would see that in fact it is quite uh, Zerg favoring. Although when you get two players at this level, they're both so skilled, uh, so talented that the map imbalances might not impact the game as much. They've been practiced it out so much, they're so familiar with the map now. The positioning of that depot will let those SCVs mine just a little bit faster. The pathfinding in StarCraft isn't perfect. And that depot helps to move in a straight line. Every little thing counts in StarCraft. Especially when you're having people play at this level. Now we're seeing uh, an SCV move out here pretty early. It looks like Flash may go for an aggressive move. Although he is going to cross direct paths 
with the Overlord, so it may just be an early scout. He also may be sending that SCV out to block the uh, drone from building that expansion. If that is his intention, it looks like Jadong has sent his drone out a little bit earlier. Ah, and it's actually a scout. We may see a fast expo here. Fast uh, command center. He sees that his opponent went hatchery first, so now Flash is going to go ahead and make the command center first. Is he? Now he is. Now, generally, fast command center is a risky build. That's why Flash sent that SCB out a little bit earlier. If he saw a spawning pull, he wouldn't be doing this. Now, J-Dog's going to spot the fast command center. He backs off. Now, this could give Flash an economic advantage, depending on how aggressive J-Dog chooses to be. So very economic game here for both players. Nobody's opting to be aggressive. We could see this game go out for a pretty long time. A lot of pressure on both these players. Huge moments in their gaming careers. All boiling down to this moment. They're both so young. Flash, uh, a genius, started playing StarCraft at 12, mastered it in three years, was beating Star League winners like it was nothing. Jadong's only a little bit older than Flash. I believe two years older. Uh, oh, by the way, Flash just turned 16 um, not long ago. Uh, I do believe Jadong, American age, is 17 or 18. Flash pulls his SCV away. Jadong may manage to catch up and pick it off. Now we see the bunker being erected. Three barracks. Again, very economic openings for both players. There is one hidden SCV at the top left. Not uncommon for people to do this against Zerg. Zerg tend to get map control pretty early on, so some players like to get one SCV and hide it and then scout with it later on. Looks like Jadong's predicted this, though. He's not going to move in here. And the speed upgrade's done, so now Flash is going to be in the dark for the time being. With Flash being in the dark, he's going to have to get an academy up here. But it doesn't look like he's going to budge just yet. He's going to squeeze out a few more SCVs. Pro gamers tend to make more SCVs rather than get the early scanner because those SCVs are so critical in the fast expoing build. And Jadong is going to hatch. Uh, well, he's got another expansion, excuse me, at the top uh, center. Now doing a little bit of harassment over here. But he's going to be going for the uh, Mutalisks very soon. Now this location that we have on the screen, or we just did have on the screen, is a hotbed for Mutalisk action. Mutalisk can retreat over the ridge. It's uh, no problem. And because of that, it looks like uh, we could see Flash in some trouble. He doesn't have any towers up just yet. The uh, um, Academy's only just now finishing, so he's not going to have any scanners to be 100% sure that Mutalists are coming. But now Flash is going to move out, probably try to scare the Zerg into making some sunken colonies. This could be a risky move here, though, with the Mutalisks on the way. It will prove to be effective. Note, he does not have medics in that group, though. That is not a very strong group of Marines. Engineering Bay on the way, although these Mutalists are going to come out pretty soon. Now, Flash, bear in mind that this build he's doing is very delicate. He's going to move over here. It's not quite clear if Jadong's actually going to be prepared, but Flash knows better, seeing the sunken colony is about to complete, and he does see the three eggs, um, which obviously had Mutalisks in. He went ahead and backed off, and I think Mutalisks may try to chase down Flash. Note that Jadong does expand to the top center of the location with the Vespian gas. Losing one Mutalisk early on, not very good by Jadong. Now he's going to move in here, probably try to get a turret. Great control, though, by Jadon, picking off a few Marines here and there. And already, uh, you can see the Jadon starting to gain a lot of control on the map, driving Flash back into his base. 
And Flash really can't afford to lose that many Marines. Flash is going to lose map control completely for the time being. Jadon has free reign now. It's going to be up to Flash to defend uh, the Mutilus harassment. Now he's going to go in here for the turret. This is a location that Flash does not want to give Jadon control of. Great Mutalist control here by Jadong. You can see he's using the Overlord trick, stacking the Mutalist together with one Overlord in the control group, constantly swapping different Overlords out so we can always keep one far away. Nice SCV pick there once again. Jadong's doing fantastic. I'm curious when the Lurker tech will come. Jadong's not focusing on the main at all. Surprisingly, Flash doesn't have uh, very many defenses there. And it looks like Jadong may be moving out now. You can see Flash has almost predicted that. I don't know why Flash didn't get any defenses here. This is terrible for Flash right now. Jadong's in absolute great condition. Dealing a ton of damage to Flash's units. Reducing the overall count by a lot. Still taking out SCVs. Now he pulls out. You can see at the bottom we have this new program. We can count exactly how many Mutalists Jadong has. 11 at the moment, now 10. And believe it or not, Flash actually has less Marines than Jadong has Mutalists. If you want to get an idea of just how bad things are going for Flash at this moment. Looks like he may swoop back in here for some more action. Here he comes, going for the turret, taking out another Marine, another SCV, another SCV, and another SCV. He keeps dealing damage. Flash's economy is in shambles. The Mutalists are going to escape. Well, without they'll take a few casualties there. He's going back in it again, taking out medics now. More SCVs and medics. Flash is completely and totally crippled, hiding another group of Mutalisks to make it look like he's already switched to the Lurker tech. This will probably pressure Flash into focusing on tanks now, when in fact there are more Mutalisks on the way. Flash is in terrible shape right now. And he's going to come back in here again. Bear in mind he is hiding a lot of Mutalisks here. Now he's just going to force him to stim and back out, wasting that medic energy. Jadong's in great shape right now. You can see he's going to expand again. Right decision. And right now, i got to say, I think Jadong is going to be the victor here, unless Flash can turn this around. Now, we did see Flash uh, barely uh, dead against Savior, and then he turned around and managed to crush Savior, no problem. He's going to come back in here. He's looking for the starport. He's going to get that turret. If he can get the SCV taking out, uh, well, if he can take out that, yeah, he did. The starport is no longer being constructed. That's going to slow down the vessel production. He's now trying to focus fire that starport a little bit. And you can see he's brought the rest of the Mutalisks into the action. Another turret's taken out. Now he's going to go back down to the starport. Note decides to back off again. We could see the hive tech all the way. Flash hardly has any SCVs. And he is going to go in here for it, going directly for the building. The starport almost taken out. Flash manages to save it. He's going to have to repair it, though. He needs to get a vessel out to stop this Mutalisk harassment. Jadong only focusing on Mutalisks. Flash doesn't look too shaken up. Once again, going for more turrets here. Taking out all three. And again, even more SCVs taking damage. Plus one attack upgrade is finished for Flash. I don't know if that's going to be enough to hold this off. The Hive is indeed on the way. And he may go in here and try to attack the starport again. And it's almost gone. He takes it out. And the SCV making the other starport. Jadong is still in control of this game. Flash is falling apart fast. Flash has not managed to leave his in base. Uh, this entire game. And you can see Jadong is just continuing to reduce the medic. Oh my god, he has so many mutalisks. He's continuing to reduce the medic marine count. And Flash 
Ashley to move out fast. He knows that. He's attacking now. Uh, but you can see Jadon just has too many mutilists. There it is. Good game. Jadon closed out the first game on a map that was supposed to favor. Uh, well, excuse me. That map does favor uh, Zerg. So that would be a tough game for Flash, although I thought Flash would put up a better fight than that. Jadong did manage to have a win there. Flash, uh, not looking that good right now. I don't even think he had a Terran lapel on. I don't know what happened. Well, we're going to go on to game two in just a second here. To recap on that previous game, Flash moved out with a uh, group of Marines. And Jadong really punished him for that, getting those mutilists a little bit early, uh, earlier than I think his opponent really expected. And with that happening, there just really wasn't that much that uh, Flash could do. And after that, Jadong was flying around the map, taking out Marines. And then for some reason, Flash didn't have turrets in his main, so that was where it really started to hurt. I think the final killing blow was the moment where the mutilists managed to take out that uh, starport that was coming in. Uh, and because that flash never managed to get vessels in, in result, in effect, never managed to get irradiate. And without that, there's really not a whole lot you can do. You can see the final moment was where Flash tried to push out, but at what avail? There were more uh, mutilists than there were Marines. Jadong cleaned that up pretty easily. So it's going to be a 1 0 lead right now for Jadong. Flash is going to have to come up with something fast if he wants to come back and win this series. To be honest, I'm a little surprised that game wasn't that close. I kind of thought it was going to be uh, pretty neck and neck, and it really wasn't. Jadong was just all over the place, taking out turrets, taking out SCVs, Marines. Flash had hardly any SCVs. Normally, you see the Terran mineral patches uh, pretty saturated. At moments like that, and it really wasn't during that game. There was really never any moment back there that Jadong was losing, to put it simply. He was... Uh, well, he started out winning, and it just snowballed from there. So, Flash really going to have to change it up. Our next map is going to be on Othello. Othello, a very interesting map. I do look at... Well, I did look at my player screen just now, and I see that both the gamers are in the game now. I think Flash did rewatch that replay, although he probably already knew what he did wrong. Now he's just going to have to play a little bit safer. Normally when you see the Terran get the uh, fast command center up, it usually means they're going to win if they don't get harassed too much early on. But in that game, that was just not the case. That's all I can say. Well, let's see if these gamers can play differently on Othello. Flash just got dominated. And I got to say, it breaks my heart to see Flash get owned that badly. He's going to have to buckle down and come up with something else pretty soon here. Half of our audience is filled up with KTF fans rooting for Flash. The other half is filled up with LeCath fans rooting for Jadon. Flash knows he's down in that first game. He's going to have to come back with something better, a stronger strategy, something. Uh, if he wants to take home that GUM TV Abertech Intel Classic Cup. Think of how many games these players have had to play to get this far. Uh, we did start out with 128 gamers. This is the largest tournament in Korea. So uh, it would really suck to get this far and take home a silver medal. This is, of course, the most important sporting event in the world right now. The Olympics is number two when uh, Jadong and Flash are playing StarCraft. That's just, that's just the fact of the matter. Sorry, Olympics. I think we're going to get this started right away. Jadong versus Flash. Game two on Othello.